Of all the sapient races who inhabit the galaxy, of all the monsters and fiends who prowl the darkness that lies between stars, none are more feared nor more reviled than the humans. There are many reasons for this, but the most obvious of them is their appearance. For you see, due to some twist of fate or cruel evolutionary joke, humanity's mere semblance inspires terror and disgust in all who look upon them. They're the universal image of death, and they have always been hated for it. To the warps, they look to be infested with parasitic horrors, reminiscent of a terrible pestilence that wiped out the first warpian extraplanetary colony. To the ool, they appear remarkably similar to mammoths, mythological creatures who bring plague and famine wherever they tread. To the orlar, their shape dredges up ancestral memories of long extinct predators. To the heron, they resemble festering corpses. On and on it goes, a dozen other twisted coincidences. Every single species seems to have one reason or another to avoid mankind, one reason or another to feel repulsed and afraid at the mere sight of them, and that's even without their long and bloody history. The humans did not ascend to the stars naturally. In fact, they may never have been able to at all. They were discovered by the Thraxian Commonwealth during the height of the Thraxian My Lai War, though it is believed that the Commonwealth higher-ups had been aware of them for some time prior to first contact. By that time, humanity had already pushed themselves and their planet to the brink. Years of consumption, pollution, and war on a global scale lead to economic and ecological collapse. The oceans turned lifeless, formerly fertile soil became eroded, and the climate system was thrown into chaos. Through the mass extinction event, their civilization clung onto life by a corporate thread. The impoverished ruins of society only surviving through indoor agriculture, water desalination, controlled environments, geoengineering, and sustainable energy. The Thrax were horrified, both by the appearance of the humans and by what they'd done to their own world. But they also saw an opportunity. The Thrax themselves were never a strong race, spindly quadrupeds with no natural weapons. They relied almost entirely on their prehensile tails and high intelligence to get by. During times of conflict, such as their war against the My Lai republics, they were heavily dependent on drones and subjugated primitives to fight their battles for them. Mankind was the single most destructive and depraved sapient species that had ever been discovered, with their mere appearance serving as a potent psychological weapon. The Commonwealth wanted them, and as the central economic powers of the Milky Way, they tended to get what they wanted. They offered the humans primitive FTL technology and welfare aid in exchange for their service. Humanity would be propelled into the space age and would be given the tools necessary for restoring their withered home. But in return, they would serve as the Thrax's mercenaries. The Commonwealth merely wanted to use their new allies as shock troops against the republics, but the humans would go far further than that. The chaotic governments of Earth not only supplied a steady stream of disposable cannon fodder from their overpopulated slums, but they also utilized some of the most horrifying weapons imaginable against their enemies. After the Mai Lai blew up an unarmed medical vessel that may or may not have been deliberately led into danger by the human military, it was code black for them. The humans unleashed a string of horrific pathogens upon the United Republic forces, terrible plagues they snatched from the festering pits of their homeworld and enhanced through genetic engineering. One by one, the Mai Lai colonies fell silent as the cold touch of the human pestilence descended upon them, leaving mountains of the dead and dying to rot in the dark. It was a disgusting atrocity, an abominable waste of intelligent life one for which even the human governments have little true excuse. In just two months, mankind had taken more lives through their atrocities than all the other factions had managed over the last seven years of war combined. Three of the four republics surrendered to the Commonwealth in face of such horror, but the fourth fought on, utilizing devastating biological and chemical weapons of their own. Ultimately, however, it was too little too late as they would learn when a joint human Thraxian fleet glassed their largest colony. The Fourth Mylai Republic surrendered, and the Thraxian Commonwealth claimed their victory, 
though their joy was far drowned out by the horror of what they'd unleashed onto the galaxy at large. The My Lai would never recover from the absolute decimation they suffered during the conflict, an entirely pointless conflict that began as nothing more than a petty squabble over a resource-rich asteroid belt. Having lost most of their former territory, along with over half their population, what remained of the once proud republics would ultimately choose to join the Interstellar Federation for the protection it offered. The humans continued to act as the Thrax's military, though as they expanded and advanced at an exponential pace, the Thrax would gradually come to treat them more as dangerous allies rather than just disposable weapons. As long as they never acted out against the Commonwealth's interests, they didn't much care what the humans got up to on the miserable little planets they ruled. Other races refused to have any contact with humanity whatsoever, going to great lengths to avoid the monsters that even the Thrax didn't seem to want to deal with. Generations passed and tensions simmered, and still the humans remained isolated from their galactic neighbors. Only emerging from their mysterious territories when the Thrax called upon them, the tales about their kind growing ever more exaggerated over time. More than a century after the Thraxian My Lai War, the Academy Arcadia would open its doors as the first interspecies school. At first, it only admitted races aligned with the Interstellar Federation, but in celebration of the long peace that the major galactic superpowers had enjoyed for so long, the sapience associated with the Thraxian Commonwealth would also eventually be accepted. People began to have second thoughts about that decision when they realized that humans were included amongst those species.